Hello, hello everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Caroline Orao, the Communications Manager at the Africa Digital Media Institute, and I'll be your host today. Welcome to our session where we are gathered to discuss disputes and how to resolve them. I know we've all encountered disagreements and conflicts, you know, whether at work, within our families or among friends. It's in these moments that really the art of dispute resolution becomes so crucial and so vital. Like by understanding how to build bridges and find common ground, we can learn how to foster understanding and preserve the relationships that we have in our lives. So that is what we are here to discuss. Karibu sana to this session. If you've taken time out of your Friday to join, I know that you really want to, you know, understand how to handle conflicts, how to approach them, and how to preserve the relationships in your life. So um, we like to say in the sessions that we hold at Accelerated that it's not um, a speech, it is an engaging session, it's an interactive session. So do not leave or drop off without asking whatever burning questions you have about the conflicts that you, that you face in your life. Um, the Q&A box is open and the chat is also open. So feel free to just drop in the chat any question you have. We'll be answering them as we go along. We will not wait until the end. So I'll be sure to see your question and raise it to Kevin. Um, but first, before we formally start the program, I'd like to tell you a little bit about ourselves. For anyone who's hearing, who's hearing about us for the first time, the Africa Digital Media Institute, aka ADMI, is a creative media and technology training institute. So what that means is that we teach creatives and techies everything from graphic design, filmmaking, animation, game development, photography, sound engineering, just the full spectrum of creative and technical skills. And then Accelerated, on the other hand, is a digital skilling accelerator by ADMI. And what we do at Accelerated is that we help professionals at different stages of their careers, whether you're just starting out or whether you've been in the industry for a bit of time, we help you to accelerate your career growth and to thrive in this digital fast workplace that we find ourselves in, especially post pandemic. So how do we do this at Accelerated? We do this by teaching you future forward skills, skills that are future fast. And we also, we also organize events and forums such as this one that you're at today. And another thing that we do is that we share a ton, a ton of free and useful resources on our social media platforms. So if you're not following us, you are missing out on really valuable resources that could help you accelerate your career. And we are on all social media platforms except TikTok. And we are at, at Join Accelerated. We post every day useful statistics, useful um, industry insights. So be sure to engage with us on those platforms. And then we also share really useful emails as well. If you signed up to this webinar, you'll be receiving useful emails. We send these, we try to send these at least once a week, something useful in your inbox to help you with your career path. And then of course, our website as well. Now today, we are joined by Kevin Churchill, and I'd like to tell you a little bit more about Kevin. So just give me a second, I want to add him, yes. So we're joined by Kevin. Kevin is our keynote speaker. And who is Kevin? Kevin is a commercial mediator and arbitrator. And he works with people across the world. I'm talking Kenya, US, UK, and South Africa to help them see, avoid, and resolve commercial and contractual disagreements and disputes that come in the course of business. The people that Kevin has worked with and continues to work with are established businesses, procurement and contract management professionals, founders, leaders, managers. So Kevin has worked a lot to help people to identify conflicts and to resolve disputes. He is a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, 
And also he's a procurement professional. So he's also a member of the Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply. Kevin holds an MBA from Imperial College in London and an MSc from the London School of Economics. He's a member of the Chartered Institute of Directors in the UK. Now, I don't know about you, but I cannot wait to hear from Kevin. I cannot wait to hear all the insights you have to share and to just really help us navigate the complex human relationship and conflict in our day to day. Thank you so much for being here, Kevin. Thank you very much, Caroline. Um, what a what a marvelous introduction. Yeah, but thank you very much indeed. Um, and thank you to ADMI, Accelerated, uh, and yourself, and, and of course the the delegates, um, the attendees this afternoon. I'm very excited to uh, deliver this this webinar. Um, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so now that you know a little bit about us, we want to get to know you better before we formally start the session. So we are going to do a short exercise and I'm going to give you instructions. Okay, so on your screen, on whichever device that you're using, first of all, whether you're using your phone, tablet, computer, type menti.com. In your search engine, type menti.com. And then when you go to menti.com, you will be prompted to key in a code. The code you will key in is on your screen. It is 35954441. I'll wait for all of us to go to menti and I'll also just type it in the chat so that we do this exercise together. So you go to menti.com and then you'll be prompted for a code. The code you key in is 3594441. Okay, I've typed it in the chat. So the first question we want to know a little bit about, you want to know how your week was. You want to know the kind of week that you had. It's Friday. We are also excited about the week coming to an end. So what one word would you use to describe your week? And I need to say that the answers are completely anonymous. I will not know who has said what. So please go to menti.com on your phone, on your laptop, and then key in the code 35954441. We want to know how your week was. One word to describe your week. Someone says their week was long. I relate. We are so happy that at least we get to rest over the weekend. Slow, that's the opposite of long, okay. I'll wait for one more minute before we move on. Lazy wonderful, successful, great, wow, interesting, crazy, hopeful, joyous. Isn't it so interesting how, how we all um, have different experiences, different life experiences. It's so interesting when I see these responses. Um, someone says, good. Okay, great. Thank you so much for telling us how your week was. So now that we are all here, because we want to know how to better resolve the conflicts in our lives, we want to know when faced with conflict, what is your initial reaction? Is it one, to confront the issue head on? Two, to avoid it altogether, just like I do not like confrontation, so I'm going to avoid this. Or is it three, you seek a third party to help you resolve the conflict? How do you handle conflict in your day to day? Whether it's at work, with your friends, with your family, with strangers even, what's, what's your default approach to conflict? Is it to approach the issue head on, to avoid confrontation or to seek help with a mediator or someone else to help you resolve the conflict? So we are seeing many of us are prone to avoiding confrontation. Mm -hmm. 
Anyone else, if you haven't responded, please respond. I cannot see who is, is completely anonymous. So those three options. Well, at this point, then everyone except one person is prone to avoiding confrontation. We do not like to approach confrontations head on. Okay, and then another question about conflict is how do you typically communicate during a conflict? Do you express your thoughts assertively? Do you try to compromise and find a middle ground? Do you seek to understand the other person's perspective? How do you typically communicate during a conflict? Do you, one, assertively express your thoughts and feelings? Do you try to compromise and find a middle ground? Or do you seek to understand the other person's perspective? I see here we are split. Okay, so most of us try to understand the other person's perspective. Some assertively express their thoughts and feelings and someone tries to compromise and find a middle ground. Okay, and then the last for today before um, Kevin comes in is what are you looking forward to learning today? What are you looking forward to learning today? You've tuned in live for a reason. What are you looking forward to learning today? Today we are discussing dispute resolution, how to build bridges in work and in life. What are you looking forward to learning today? Like once we finish, you want to feel satisfied that you spent your time with us. So what are you looking forward to learning today? I'll give us one minute. Expertise view. Thank goodness Kevin is here, the expert in conflict resolution, conflict management. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? What are you looking forward to learning today? Conflict resolution, skills to solve conflicts. Mm -hmm. An expert's view on this. You're in the right place. Anyone else, what are you looking forward to learning today? So we've said we want an expert's view on conflict. Uh, we want to learn how to resolve conflict. Uh, someone just wants to have a successful outcome. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you so much for participating in that. And now, I'm inviting to the stage, Kevin. Kevin, welcome. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you and hearing your insights. Thank you very much, Caroline. Excellent, thank you. I will just share my screen. There, can everybody uh, see the screen? Yes, yes, we can see it. You can blow it up. Oh, of course, yeah, thank you. There we go. How is that? Perfect. Perfect. Great. Well, what a fascinating uh, poll, a menti poll that you 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 did there. You all participated in. Yes, so wonderful. Whoever is um, so whoever said they're having a joyous week, uh, can I catch up with you after? I uh, I need to learn from you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm glad everyone's having what seems to be uh, you know, such a such a great week. Um, thank you for, for inviting me along. I'm delighted to uh, be here. We're going to uh, make a start now. Um, and I will attempt to um, meet your expectations in terms of what you are um, hoping to uh, get out of uh, the webinar this afternoon. Um, so as Caroline said, this is very much a discussion. Um, it's not a speech or, or a lecture. Uh, and we have various ways of um, interacting, uh, not least via the chat. Um, or un raising hands, um, unmuting and, and, and asking questions. So please do get involved as we uh, go along. Uh, Caroline, I'll just ask you if I may, just to keep an eye on the chat, um, because I might miss uh, one or two questions or comments that come in as I'm uh, flicking through my slides. So I'd be grateful for your help uh, just, just uh, coordinating that. Yes, I'm, I'm keeping an eye out. 
Lovely, lovely, thank you. So we'll make a start. Um, and here, here we are, this is what we're here to discuss this afternoon, the art of dispute resolution, building bridges in work and in life. Uh, the, the webinar split into three parts, and these are the parts that, that we'll uh, discuss. So part one, where do disagreements and disputes start and, and why? Where do they come from? Part two, what's the solution or way out of them? How do we build bridges? And three, what are some practical processes we can use and employ uh, as we are going through our disagreement or dispute situation to manage them and, and get through them and build bridges uh, with the, the other party or the counterparty in, in the dispute? So those are the three things we'll, we'll cover, split into three parts. And there's a short Q&A at the end of each of those parts. So as I say, please do um, get involved, ask questions, raise your hand at, at the end of each of these three parts. Oh, right, how do I do this? Here we are, sorry, my button has stopped working. Right, here we go. Um, so we're gonna start off with another Mentimeter poll. Uh, Caroline, this is where we swap screens again, isn't it? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so we are going to go back to Menti once more on your phone. So on your phone or whichever device, if you go to Menti, you'll find another question on your screen. Mm -hmm, answers already coming in. Have you been in a disagreement or dispute situation before? Yes, no, not sure. Have you ever been in a conflict before, in a disagreement before? Which one is it? Is it yes? Is it no? Or are you not sure? Okay, many of us are saying yes, and I would be surprised if anyone said no, because is it really a human experience if you've never been in conflict? So we move on to the second question. Which setting did the disagreement happen? Now we mentioned disagreements happen in very many different con contexts, at work, with family, with friends. So you want to know your most recent disagreement, for instance, where did it happen? Was it at work? Was it in a family setting? Or was it in a community setting with friends? Was it work, friends, or family? Where did your most recent disagreement happen? Work, friends, or family? Well, I see for many it's work. And then, oh, I spoke too soon, friends. So friends or just a social setting, work and family time. Okay, and then now there's a third question on your screen. What is the status of that dispute? Is it one resolved? Did you guys sit down and work through it? Is it still ongoing? Or number three, are you in limbo? It hasn't arisen yet, but you know it will crop up at some point. So is the dispute resolved? One, is the dispute ongoing? Two, or are you in limbo? Like, you know, it hasn't arisen yet, but you know it will at some point. Oh, good to see that most of you resolved your disputes. Okay, so for most it's resolved, for some it's ongoing. And, oh, okay. And then, um, oh, wait, so we are done, Kevin. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah, interesting poll. Um, interesting that uh, the setting there for, for question two, um, most people uh, experience that dispute in a, in a social setting. Um, one or two in work, also one or two in a, in a, in a family setting. Um, 
And glad to say that, uh, you know, most of them there, most uh, disputes that you've been involved in have, have been resolved. So, yes, well, well, well done on that one. Um, for those that are that are ongoing, um, what I'll hope to do today and indeed for, for, for all sorts of disputes is give you some practical um, methods of, of uh, addressing those disagreements and disputes as, as, as they come up and perhaps a new way of thinking about them as well as we as we go through the webinar this afternoon. So thank you. Very very much for uh, taking part in that poll. So part one, uh, where do disagreements and disputes start and why? So firstly, I'm going to start very holistically and very high level here and then drill down into a bit of the detail as we go through the presentation in, in this first part. What can you see here? Pop some answers in the chat. Caroline, do let me know what people are saying. Uh, as we are going along. So what, what, what can you see? Uh, a blue screen, uh, a white line, some sort of dot. What, um, what can you see on this uh, sky? Okay, yeah. Hussein, Hussein says sky-like. He can see something sky-like. Um, Rukia says it's a planet in space. Mm. Mm -hmm. Please tell us what you can see. What are you seeing on your screen? Describe what you're seeing. Anything that pops out to you. Peter says, looks like a star. Looks like a star. Gavin. Gavin says, um, space like. Very Anyone good. else? What do you see? Very good. Looks like um, sky. Hilary says, looks like a sky. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I think Rukia is the closest. Uh, Peter's pretty close as well. Um, so someone also says, sorry, before you continue, um, Eric says, looks like the sky. Chogo says, streaks of light. So, yeah, those are the responses we've received. Excellent. Excellent. Very close. Well, will you or will you not? be surprised to know that that is earth that that is us that is planet earth uh seen from space that's what we look like from from space and this photograph is quite a famous photograph uh, and it was taken in 1990 by this satellite called voyager one which was launched in 1977 uh, from NASA in, in Cape Canaveral in Florida, launched into space and it flew away and it carried on flying and it flew for many, many years and it's heading away from Earth and the, the solar system. And in 1990, they turned the, the, that probe, that satellite around and they commanded it to turn around and take a picture. And when it turned around, this is what it saw. And it looked back and it and it took a picture of us there hanging in space, hanging in that streak of light before it turned back around and carried on heading out of the, the solar system. Now, why have I sort of put that 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 picture up? there and shown us Earth hanging, hanging in this? And 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 the reason is is. That is us, and here we all are, and that is all we've got. Um, and that's where we all live, and there are eight billion of us that, that, that live on planet Earth, and the, the number of people, the population increases year on year. Soon there will be nine billion and then 10 billion, all, all living on, on that planet. And this is what life sometimes feels like here on Earth with eight billion other people, um, all here as individuals, all together. Uh, getting on with our lives, trying our best, um, living our lives as individuals and also in social groups, in, in family groups and professional workplace groups and social and, and community groups. And, and, and each of us as, as human beings, as individuals are all here sort of interacting, communicating, bumping up against each other. Uh, negotiating with each other, communicating with, with each other, trying to persuade each other of our points of view, 
and our positions as we as we each try and make our mark in life. Um, and that's what it feels like and what life is like here on earth. So given that that's how it is and that's how it looks and feels to most of us most of the time, it's almost inevitable that disagreements and conflict and differences of opinion um, and differences of views and, and thoughts and ways of, of acting arise because there are so many people uh, on, 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 this, on this planet, that tiny planet we on, on the previous slide. Um, so it's inevitable that, that, that we're all gonna experience at some points in our, in our lives, um, disagreements and, and disputes. I wanted to put some quotes um, up here about communication, uh, because whilst we're all here on earth, uh, feeling like we're all feeling in that, in that slide, in this pretty crowded place, Communication is everything, and the way we communicate with each other defines us as, as human beings. Um, yes, other animals from the animal kingdom, including human beings, communicate with each other, but we do it particularly well as, as, as human beings. We have speech, we have tone of voice, we have body language, and, and we have more communication abilities and, and, and skills than, than other animals in the animal kingdom. So it all starts with people and it all starts with communication. So I, I, I thought these quotes really, for me, uh, really sort of say it, say it all. Uh, the way we communicate with others and ourselves ultimately determines our quality of life. And that's by Tony Robbins. I'm sure you've seen him on, 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 on the internet and on TikTok. Um, so yeah, the way we communicate with others and ourselves ultimately determines our quality of life. And the next one on, 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 on the top right here, communication, the human connection is the key to personal and career success. So not a key, but the key to personal and career success. And then um, the quote that was on the introduction loop at the start of, of the webinar, here it is again by George Bernard Shaw, the playwright uh, from Ireland, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. <laughs> I do like that one, and, and I, I'll refer to that a little bit later. So yeah, important to state that communication is vital to our existence, vital to the way we all interact down here as human beings on, on that small planet Earth that we saw previously. Um, and and this is where this is where it starts, and we'll see why this is important to disagreements and disputes as we go along. So answers in the chat again. Five truths about disagreements and disputes. To what extent do you agree with any of these? All of these? Which one do you agree with? Which one you don't you agree with? What do you think? So I'm going to read them out. So number one, they can be the norm or business as usual, in business and in life? What do you think? Agree, disagree? Pop some comments in the chat. They can be uncomfortable, unsettling, annoying, stressful, distracting, uh, time-consuming and costly. Uh, again, agree with that? Agree with some of that? Disagree? Uh, what do you think? Um, Valerie, you agree with number one. Excellent. Um, yeah, I think you're, I think you're right. Uh, they do with so many people on this planet, they can feel a bit business as usual, can't they? In our social, family, professional, community, places of worship settings. Number three, the other party likely thinks and feels the same way as you. That's an interesting one. Now, do you think the other party in this in this disagreement? So think of someone you've been in a disagreement with. You're feeling annoyed and stressed and upset and uncomfortable with it. Do you think the other party likely feels the same way? Thinks and feels the same way? Yeah, Eunice, Valerie, Patricia, you all agree with two. Um, Eunice, you disagree with three. Interesting. Yeah, Valerie agrees with three. Um, Peter. Uh, number four, they can be avoided, but are sometimes necessary and helpful. Hmm. Are they sometimes necessary and helpful? Uh, many people agree with that. Rukia, Patricia, Valerie, Beatrice, Eunice, uh, you're inclined to agree with that, Lois. Um, and number five, 
all disagreements and disputes end. And very often with a little preparation, a little bit of thinking, what we're doing today, they end well, including even better than the original agreement or of contract or, or relationship. Um, so many people agree with, with four, um, that's good. And a number of people disagree with five. Okay, that's good. Eunice, Lois, yeah, Hillary disagree with, with number five. I think sometimes it feels like these disagreements and disputes never end. <laughs> <laughs> so that could be um, why people are disagreeing with, with that, because they do sometimes feel like they go on and on and on. Um, but yeah, very often, say with a little preparation, a little thinking, a little, a little planning that we'll cover today, they hopefully can end even better. Not always, but they can end even better than the original agreement or contract. So Excellent. Well done. Great participation. And um, keep that coming. There's probably going to be a couple of other opportunities to put your thoughts in the chat as we as we go along and ask any questions as you as you want to as well. So, again, pop, pop, uh, pop a quick answer in the chat. This is an easy one. So is this a six or a nine? What do you think? The guy on the left is shouting, it's a six. And the guy on the right is shouting, no, it's a nine. Now, is it a six or is it a nine? Eunice, you've got a good answer there. Patricia, excellent. Depends on your perspective. Eunice, Valerie, Hussein, both. Lois, both depending on perspective. Murthy, both. Peter, depends on perspective. Excellent. Margaret is both. It is both. Um, of course, they're, they're both correct. The gentleman, the man on the left who's shouting, it's a six, and the, and the person on the right who's shouting, it's a nine. They, of course, they're, they're both absolutely right. But they're, and they're both sure of their positions. They're both certain. <laughs> Um, and as you've quite rightly pointed out, Lois and Peter and others, it, of course, depends on, on perspective. And we'll come on to say a little bit more about that as we go along. So um, who recognises this? When dealing with people in life or work, do you recognise this, this typical pattern? So you start here, top left, and then it finishes down there, bottom right. So we start with communication. Um, as we saw from the quotes there, communication is a vital skill. It determines the, the quality of one's life. So we start with communication and then we move into understanding. Um, and we think, yes, we've understood each other. And then perhaps a few hours or a few days later, it becomes apparent that there was some misunderstanding. Perhaps we didn't quite understand each other about what we were talking about. Um, quite as well as we thought. So clearly there's some misunderstanding now that we didn't think was there, but, but now is. And then we try to correct it. Um, we, we try to have that phone call, send that WhatsApp message, double check, try and correct that misunderstanding. And then perhaps we miscommunicate. We don't, we don't phrase the telephone call in perhaps the correct way. We don't phrase the WhatsApp chat. In, in the right way. We, we make a bit of a mess of, of the email that we, we are writing and then sending, and it wasn't received quite as we intended it to be received by, by the other party, the other person. So there's then miscommunication. And then down on the bottom row, everyone's confused. <laughs> by now, we're, there's, a, there's, a, <laughs> there's a fair bit of confusion going on amongst both people, both parties, and maybe three or four people, if there are three or four people involved. Um, people are getting frustrated. Yes, you're right, Eunice, this is, this is pretty typical. People are frustrated. Then there's kind of a disagreement now. And, and, and you know, we're, we're taking different positions and we're, we're annoyed. And now we're in a dispute. So um, this now it's a problem. Um, and, and yeah, is this typical? Uh, Eunice, you, 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 you're suggesting that it is. It certainly is for me. Uh, 
I go through this several times a week uh, with very <laughs> various people in various sort of situations. Um, but yeah, this 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 can be uh, certainly how it feels again in family in family situations, in professional situations, social and and community sort of situations with colleagues and workplace. Uh, situations and so on so yeah I think I think pretty typical here we are this is the frustrated and confused stage on the bottom row like the lady top right she's like, good heavens what's going on here so I think that's a, a, a typical pattern um, but why do we end up here where do disagreements and disputes come from and, and a number of you in the chat have, have already said and have said correctly in a nutshell these disagreements and disputes comes, come from different perceptions and different assumptions about the same set of circumstances. So our two, two people are on the top left here, one is shouting six, one is shouting nine. They've got different perceptions and, and, and what, because it looks like a six from the left and it looks like a nine from the right. And that whole root cause of that argument about if it's a six and if it's a nine is purely from the different perceptions of, of, of looking at that number on the ground there. And then we make different assumptions because I'm on the left shouting it's a six and the other person over on the right is shouting it's a nine. I'm assuming that that other person there is, is, a, is a bit mad or a bit, a bit crazy or just can't see. So I'm making some assumptions and the person on the right is, 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 is making some assumptions back about me uh, because I'm insisting it's a six. And those assumptions are that I must be crazy or, or, or I just can't see or I must be a bit stupid or I just why don't I get it? Like it just it doesn't make any sense. So then we move down that 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 that, that yellow flow chart from the previous slide. Now we're both confused. And, and now we're both frustrated and now we're disagreeing uh, and, and, and we're into a dispute. And it's the same set of circumstances that we're, that we're both looking at. So where, where, do they, where do they come from? They come from, very simply, different perceptions and different assumptions of, of the same circumstances. And they get better or worse based on the different perceptions and different assumptions that change over time. So, the, 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 the content of the disagreement or the subject matter of the disagreement, whether it's uh, with a family member, you know, about, um, you know, some family matters or with friends about some social matters, those that 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 the situation and the circumstances of, of that disagreement or dispute change over time. Uh, and, and therefore your perceptions and assumptions about that dispute and what you think and feel about it change as you go along also. So it's a dynamic situation. And when you've got 8 billion people here at the bottom, all with different perceptions, all with different assumptions of, of, of the same circumstances, and they're all changing over time, that's where they come from. And disagreements and disputes are, are almost inevitable. So here we are again, just to illustrate where the starting point is, is before we even communicate and understand, we, we, we must know and, and understand our own assumptions and our own perceptions. One, we have them, and two, what are they? Even about the situation, about the, 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 the disagreement or dispute in hand, uh, or about the circumstances that, that is the subject matter of the situation. So we have some assumptions about it, what they think, what I think. We have our own perceptions, even before we try and go along this this flow chart that we've said is um, is typical. Um, Anne has asked a question. Uh, let me try and answer it. Yes, can I get a recording for this session? Um, yes, I believe you can, Anne. Uh, it's being recorded, and uh, I think you'll get it at the end. I'm sure Caroline will correct me if I'm wrong as we get as we get to the end of this section one. Um, and. Based upon the fact that everything starts with assumptions and perceptions, here's another quote I like from Buddha. And it simply says, with our thoughts, we make the world. And I think that's quite a profound quote as well. So with our, what that means to me is, is with our assumptions about the world and with our perceptions of the world, our space on this planet Earth 
amongst those other 8 billion people that are also here, with our own thoughts in, in our head, we create our own world and our interactions and relationships with all those other, with ourselves and all those other people that are here. So yeah, with our thoughts, thoughts we create the world. F fascinating quote. There's the end of uh, session one. Uh, and there's a short Q&A before we get on to session two. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you for that. Um, and now that we know, it's just really our different perspectives that can really cause the conflicts that we have in our lives. So I want to ask um, a question that came in earlier. Now, can active listening and open-mindedness help in navigating conflicts? Can active listening and open-mindedness help? Now that we've, we've learned that conflicts arise from our different perceptions and different assumptions, can active listening and open-mindedness help? Absolutely, it can. A active listening and open-mindedness, and I've got a slide on that a little later on, is, is the starting point of um, understanding how the dispute came about and, and is indeed the root out of it. So um, active listening is, 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 is vital um, in, in the sense of um, trying to understand where the other person is coming from, trying to get to the bottom of what are their assumptions and perceptions about this particular situation. Firstly, you start with your, your, yourself. You, you ask yourself the, the question, what are my assumptions um, and perceptions about this situation that I'm in with my parents or, or you know, with my, my friends or with my spouse or with my boss or colleagues? What am I assuming about, about, about this? How am I seeing this situation? And then part two is, is trying to understand how the other person says it, um, uh, sees it, you know, what are their assumptions and perceptions about the same situation? So active listening is, is absolutely vital in, um, in, in understanding where they're coming from. Yeah, and I'll talk a bit, a little bit more about that later. Mm, okay, so then that also means that self-reflection and self-awareness is really important, right? It is indeed. Um, self-awareness and, and, and self-reflection. Um, I can't remember which philosopher it was. I think it might have been Plato or Aristotle. It was one of those famous names we, we all know. Simply said, know thyself. Um, and, and that is the starting point for, you know, for, for, for all knowledge and, and is a way of being in, in, in the world. Know thyself or know thyself first. And if you know yourself um, and, and what, what your assumptions, biases, blind spots are, if you know yourself really well, then you can become a really powerful and effective individual in all of your relational settings as we're all here on, on, on Earth. Mm, OK, um, we have a question from Stella. She's asking, which book do you recommend for better communication and dispute resolution? Is there a book you could recommend? Ah, that's a really good question. I mean, there are a number of books that, that I could recommend. If you don't mind, let me take that question away and mm -hmm. um, answer it after, because I want to get the, the names of the books and the authors mm -hmm. right. So, but there are, there are a, a number of excellent books um, in this space. Yeah, okay. thank you. Stella, I will drop you the book recommendations on your email. And then Eunice asks, do you understand that sometimes the conflict is resolved, but the issue continues to affect you? So you keep wondering whether you're the problem. Absolutely. Um, that's uh, Thank you, Eunice. Good question. Um, and I would ask, so sometimes certainly the conflict is resolved or appears to be resolved, but the issue continues to affect you. One could ask if the issue continues to affect you, is the situation of it, it, it resolved? Is the disagreement or dispute actually resolved? Or are we, or are we, is one, you know, is, is the situation not actually resolved and the issue continues to, to affect and one is avoiding, um, you know, completely natural human reaction and, and, and you know, the answer to, to one of the polls at the start, you know, one continues to avoid that situation. So, 
Yes, Eunice, I, I think you're right. Sometimes it appears the conflict is resolved, but if the issue continues, is there more resolution to go? Um, and, and is there a different perspective, a different assumption on that, on that uh, particular set of circumstances that you could make or you would like the other party to make and they change their perspective and, and, and perhaps you know, change their assumptions and vice versa, that then that situation could quite rightly actually be resolved. So even though it appears it might be done, I, I would wonder if it actually is done, if, if it continues to affect you in, in, in such a way. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, uh, you, uh, Hussein uh, says, I think it's a comment. He says that perceptions or assumptions are very subjective. Um, is there like perhaps a standard that we could drive when it comes to getting common ground or getting consensus other than our own perceptions and assumptions because those are really subjective? Excellent question. Mm -hmm. I mean, perceptions and assumptions are entirely subjective. Um, and that, in many ways, is exactly where the problems come from. <laughs> um, perceptions and, 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 and assumptions are 100% subjective, uh, and they're based on you uh, alongside the other 8 billion people uh, on, 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 on the planet. Um, and your perceptions and assumptions are arrived at entirely based on your own experiences right from when you were a child. Your, your own experiences of growing up, your relationships that you formed formed and didn't form, your, the, the experiences you had and didn't have. We're a product of our accumulated experience right from when we were lit, little. Um, and our perceptions and assumptions are accumulated as we go through life also. How, how we were treated, how we treat others, the good bits and the not so good bits uh, for all the years we've all been been alive um, and our perceptions and assumptions are entirely subjective. Um, could we drive a standard on different situations to drive a common consensus? Yeah, I think it's very difficult given such variety and 8 billion individuals you know, on the planet, it's very difficult to drive a standard as such on different situations, but we can certainly drive a common consensus, I think, and I'll come on to that in part three as to how we might do that. And, and and what we what we might um, what that might look like, but the route out, the route into disputes and disagreements is different perceptions and assumptions of the same circumstances. So the route out of disagreement, disputes and disagreements is understanding each other's perceptions and assumptions of of, of the same circumstances, and that's where active listening comes in. If you're able to do that and they're able to do that for you back, i.e. understand your perceptions and assumptions, then the dispute's resolved. Then it's- Okay. You can move Thank on. you, Kevin. Um, Lois has a question, but I think you'll answer this in either part two or three. Um, she's asking how, how we can be self-aware and mindful when we select the best process to resolve conflict. Absolutely. Great question. And there are a number of processes and I'll cover those in part three. Yes, I'll show okay. you what the five or six approaches are to, to resolution and which ones Great. are the best. Great. I think we can proceed. I'm um, just Hussein. Yes, you can break for prayers. We'll be here past 5 p.m. We'll close at six so you can break and then come back and find us. But yes, Kevin, uh, let's proceed. Great, thank you very much. And thank you for all the questions. Excellent questions, everyone. Good, keep them coming. Um, so part two now, um, what's the solution or way out? How do we build bridges? Now, remember we said it feels very much like this on earth. Uh, we've talked about this in quite a, quite a fair amount of detail so far, so I won't spend too long on it. But here we all are, all here together communicating, negotiating, influencing, wading, each other one, um, you know, in, in various networks and, and social situations that we're all in to see our point of view. So this is what it feels like. Now, as we're all here on Earth, um, wandering around the planet, getting on with our lives, trying to, to do our best, 
Um, see to what extent you identify with this also, and please put some comments in the chat as to whether you agree or not. So human nature is such that as we wander through our lives day to day with all the other people that are here, those that are close to us, and, and perhaps those that aren't, but personally and professionally and so on, we're, we're orienting our lives, consciously or subconsciously, around a search for these five things. So the theory goes all human beings are most of the time are seeking these five things. And we, so the first one, I'll read them out. Uh, number one, we're seeking status. And what that means is, is we're seeking relative importance for ourselves to others. So we're seeking relative importance in comparison to others. And we may be doing that in social friendship situations through the, you know, the clothes we wear, the brands we buy, the way we have our hair, um, you know, the, uh, the way the jewelry and stuff and things like that that, 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 that we that we um, that we wear, uh, the car we drive, maybe for those those that that that, that, that drive. Um, relative importance to others in a professional sense in terms of we all like a nice job title, um, we all like a, a promotion, um, we all like to be recognized in our career, you know, having a good job title or a nice job title, perhaps with manager in it or, you know, direct, uh, assistant director or director, you know, that, that gives us a sense of status. And if you're a chief exec, you've got even more status. Um, you know, perhaps in a political sense, if you're a, a governor, a county governor, an MP, um, you know, a minister, um, you know, there's there's a seek a seeking of status and relative importance to others. Perhaps in a family sense, you might be a firstborn, a secondborn, lastborn, thirdborn. You might be a brother or a sister, a first cousin or a second cousin. So some of the status is given to us, um, and some of the status we seek and we actively seek. And, and we as human beings consciously, as I say, or subconsciously go through life seeking, seeking that status. Number two, certainty. We, we like as human beings being able to predict the future. Um, and try, as we talk through these, try and think of this in the context of disagreements and disputes that you've been in. So yeah, getting back to there, number two, we're not very good as human beings with uncertainty. We actually like certainty and we seek it out. We seek out security and certainty over the next sort of, we like to know what's happening over the next two weeks, three weeks. We like to know what we're doing tomorrow. Um, you know, we like to know that we're going to have a job or we like we like to, you know, prepare as much as we can to get a job, you know, or because or, or, uh, we, we like the certainty and security that, that a job perhaps or a, a, a starting a business or, or something like that will bring us. So we like to be able to predict the future. Number three, autonomy. We as human beings like to be able to choose for ourselves, um, you know, perhaps which school we go to, which degree, university course we're going to study for, which partner, spouse, you know, we're gonna, going to marry, which job we might go for. We like to choose where we, where we uh, want to live. In, in what part of town we don't like being told by others you know friends parents pastors relatives imams you know what what to do uh, and we as human beings like to exercise a sense of autonomy over our own being um, and that's a natural human instinct relatedness number four we seek out we're, we're social animals uh, we're social beings human beings uh, with so many people on on the planet, I I don't think we've got any choice. <laughs> I think we must be social to to be able to get along, and we seek a sense of safety with others. We we get we know very quickly who who our friends are and who we could be friends with, and we know very quickly who the foes might be and who we might want to avoid for 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 whatever reason. And we're wired as human beings in our DNA. One, to seek that relatedness with our fellow human being and seek that sense of safety. And that's psychological safety as well as physical safety. And, and as I say, we're predisposed to know who the, the foes are in life and who we might want to avoid. Um, and finally, fairness. We're predisposed to seeking, seeking fairness for ourselves and, and for others. We like to be treated fairly by, by other people. Um, and we don't like to be treated unfairly. And, and also we like to be fair to others also. And it, it feels 
you know, not very nice if you know you've you've treated someone, you know, not very fairly and, and not very nicely. So we're all here on this planet, um, as I say, get, getting along, communicating, negotiating, rubbing up against each other, bumping into each other. And at the same time, we're all seeking these these five things as we go through life from our friends, family and professional colleagues, status, certainty, autonomy, relatedness, fairness. Sometimes we don't even know we're doing it. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But I, I would say most of the time, I think this is all pretty unconscious. Um, maybe we, maybe status is conscious because we all know we like a, a good job title and we all know we like some new trainers now and again. <laughs> so yeah, that one may be more, more obvious than others. Any thoughts on that as we go on to the next slide? What do you think? Put your comments in the chat. Okay, I'll carry on. Mm -hmm. And if you do have any comments, pop them in. Is there anything in the Q&A, Caroline? Um, this is for part two. Part two, yes. Okay. So let me just um, give me a second. Okay, so a uh, question is in situations where trust has been compromised, what steps can people take to rebuild that trust? I don't know if this is going to be covered in part three or if you can answer it now. Um, yeah, I can answer it in part two, um, but it's a great question. And the breaking of trust comes out of um, part number two here, certainty. So trust, so except in the point that we as human beings like certainty, we are seeking certainty, tr trust comes out of um, having certainty or the certainty you think you have with, with another individual. So you're seeking certainty, you trust this individual, you think, you know, yeah, I feel pretty certain, I feel pretty related, you know, to this individual, they're in the friend camp, perhaps not the foe camp, I'm, I'm certain of the parameters of, of this relationship, and then all of a sudden, something happens, and, and what you thought was certain isn't certain anymore, and, and that trust has, has, has been broken, and, and that's what the breaking of, that's why the breaking of trust hurts so much, because, you know, we are, we are seeking certainty, we're seeking relatedness, we're seeking fairness, and, and, and the breach of trust really is, is breaching all of those things, and, and, and that's why it's so painful. So, yeah, I'll come on to perhaps talk in a little bit later in part two how, how man, one might sort of deal with that, because um, that's, that's, that's painful when that happens, mm. and this is fine. Mm, okay, um, just one more question. We mentioned how um, the self-awareness is really important, and self-reflection. And then there was that slide that you did with that showed how many we are. You know, we are rubbing on each other. We are just so many human beings. We are we are many in number. And then we also happen to be really emotional beings. So how do we manage our emotions effectively when engaging in conflict resolution? Because sometimes our emotions really hold us back. So how do we how do we manage our emotions effectively when engaging in conflict resolution? Excellent. Excellent. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, in conflict, emotions are so important. Um, and again, it comes back to um, emo emotions are fine. So uh, getting angry, getting upset, getting annoyed, getting frustrated, they're, they're all natural human responses, natural human emotions. There's almost nothing you can do about them. Um, you're going to feel them regardless and you feel them in, in, in disagreements and disputes, and you can feel your, your blood pressure rising, you can feel your face going red, you can feel your heartbeat increase um, in, in any sort of situation uh, like that, you know, whether it be a, a family, social, business one, in fact. Um, so I, I think that the first thing is to accept there's not a lot one can do, if anything, you know, a, a, about emotions arising, the thing you can do um, when emotions arise is, is think and respond to how you'll deal with them. One, you can, you can recognize that they're there and, and you can recognize that, that they're, they're coming, but you can choose how to respond to them and you can either flow with them or you can flow against them or, 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 
or you know manage them and, and control them um and it's always better or in my experience it's always better to one know they're there know they're normal and then just take a breath or two and then try and and and, and think about how you you then respond um based on those emotions that, that that you're you're feeling and sometimes a second or two is all it takes to get control of yourself um and and bring yourself sort of back into reality back into the room and not respond um in in in, in the way you 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 know you wish you could or, or wish you would which is based entirely on emotion so yeah normal they will come you can't suppress them, but you can take a moment or two to, to think about, let them land and think about how you respond to, to, to the other party. And that's always the best thing to do. Okay, thank you for that, Kevin. Lois asks, um, how do we integrate or put in mind all the five human experiences when resolving conflict? Yeah, very, very good question. I'm gonna cover that in a couple of slides time as mm -hmm. well. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, then we can close with a comment from Eunice, who says um, she agrees with all the points you're making, especially the point you made that we don't realize we are doing all these five human experiences. That's, I think that's absolutely right. And it links to um, Lois's question as well. Most of the time, we don't realize that, that um, as human beings, this is what we're doing. The reason I wanted to take away the question um, about the books, which is a, a, an excellent question from Stella, is some of the better books actually are about human behavior and human psychology. Um, those are good books to start with. And then you almost get down into a bit more detail about conflict resolution. But the books to start with actually be human behavior. So uh, a book off the top of my head about human behavior is Daniel Kahneman, Think Fast and Slow. The books I would be with is human books. Um, they're the best ones. And as I say, I'll suggest some after the, the, um, the, the session. Okay, thank you. Uh, we can proceed. Great. Let me just move this out of the way. So, okay, good. I've cleared my screen now. Um, so, yes, I mentioned that the we as human beings are, are searching for those those five, you know, points um, of human experience, consciously or subconsciously, as as we go through life. And what falls from that is another layer of of um, expectation um, called interests and needs. Now, each of us have, have various interests and needs in day-to-day in -day life, in, in normal life, and in disagreement and dispute situations. Now, depending on the particular situation and the particular set of circumstances that you're all in, every organization, company, individual, business, person has these interests and needs. So you have some personal interests and needs, and you have some, let's call them commercial interests and needs. You know, again, depending on whether we're talking about perhaps a, um, you'll have more of one and less of the other, more of commercial, less of personal, you know, depending on your particular set of circumstances, whether it's a business situation or a, or a personal situation. Um, but you'll have both in, in every situation. So think of a disagreement, think of a dispute that you've been involved in, and to what extent do you... Um, you know, recognize this. So your personal interests and needs, you have a need for, for personal recognition. You, 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 like, you like it when people recognize you as a human being, as a person, um, and see you, um, you know, for, uh, and your position and your perspective and, and, and where you're coming from. You have a need to be heard on this particular matter. You have needs for respect. You want to retain your respect. You want to be respected you want to retain your dignity. You have a need for dignity in this, you know, in this particular situation that we're talking about. Professionally, you might have career and promotion needs and interests. You might want to get promoted this year, next year. You might have a sales target. You might have a personal reputation or a personal brand you want to protect. You might be known in your friend group or professional group 
who, as the person who is always, you know, reliable, the person who always comes through and does what he or she says that they're going to do. So that's a, a personal reputation that you, you know, you want to protect and continue. And, and that's your particular interest or need in that situation. You have a need for job security. You like to be appreciated, treated fairly, um, treated equally. And then, of course, at the bottom, we have those usually subconscious needs um, of status, certainty, autonomy, relatedness, and fairness that we were we were talking about. If you're an SME, an entrepreneur, a co-founder, you probably have all those personal needs, um, and you probably have these commercial interests and needs as well. If you're a business person, you've got growth and revenue expectations. You want to maximize profit. You've got some market impact expectations. Um, further on down, you've got some company brand and reputation goals. Um, that you want to achieve, you want your startup or your established business to, to achieve over the next few years, you want to make the most of any market opportunities, increase market share, and you've got customers to think about, you want impact, growth, you've got stakeholders and shareholders to think about also. So this is where you're coming from, um, and you have, uh, in, in, a, in a disagreement or dispute situation, um, you have them, um, and they're legitimate, and the other party has them also. So this is the next slide. Um, you have your uh, personal interests and needs. So does the other party. Um, but they are different. So you're coming from a place where, where you have assumptions and perceptions about what yours are. They're coming from a place of, of uh, assumptions and perceptions about what theirs are. And they're different. To, to, to yours, you, you, they're different to each other. Same on the commercial side. You may be in a, in a SME or a business or a professional sort of situation. Um, you have your personal, sorry, your commercial interests and needs for your company. They have theirs, but they're not, they might not be currently aligned. They don't appear to be um, aligned. And then that's where the disagreement, you don't know that, you don't know that about each other. You might not even know your own but the chances are they're, they're misaligned, not aligned. And then that's where the disagreement or dispute arises. So here we are again. Good heavens, this is getting complicated, isn't it? So <laughs> our, our typical process of, you know, what we looked at before, communication, understanding, misunderstanding, and it goes on. What underpins all of this, even before you start communicating, is, as we've said, our assumptions, our perceptions, but also now our scarf needs and our particular commercial pers and personal interests and needs. Good heavens, what a lot to think about. Um, and then we embark on this, this train of thought um, as we go along left, left to right. Um, and yeah, complicated, but um, uh, uh, applicable and, and is the route out, as I'll come on to mention. Um, in a sec. So what is the solution or, or way out? Well, the first thing is to realize um, that this is actually how it is, complex as it is, uh, and, and, you know, complicated as, as it is. This is the starting point we as human beings and every other human being, you know, on this planet begin from. Um, so the, the first step is to realize, you know, this, this is actually how it is. Then um, when one does try communication that hopefully leads to understanding, overdo communication and understanding really, really well. Spend time to do it. Have those, um, you know, exploratory conversations about what the sort of situation is of the, of the disagreement and dispute, communicate with the other party, make that phone call to them uh, to discuss, uh, encourage them to make that call back to you, send that WhatsApp message, maybe send two or three, make sure it's clear, send it and also call, you know, send that email and make, make sure there really, really is understanding. Um, even if you have to do it two or three times. So keep going left and right here um, and keep overdoing both of these boxes, communication and understanding. That will minimize the misunderstanding and the miscommunication and keep that to a minimum um, as you possibly can. At pretty much all costs, 
try and stay above this black line and keep going left and right, left and right, um, and try to avoid getting below this black line, which is the confusion, frustration, disagreement, dispute space. If you do find yourself down here, it's okay. Um, it, it can be recovered. Of course, it can be recovered. And I'll talk about how in part three, but it's much prevention is better than cure. Um, and the two most important things on this slide is, is the, the left part, which it all begins here. Remember that and spend some time thinking about that. And then if you get, if you think about that and spend some time thinking about that, that's brilliant. And then once you get into this communication understanding loop, then, then be prepared to spend some time going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, days, weeks, sometimes months, um, to, 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 to get it done and to get it progressed. So yeah, if it, those are the, the two things to kind of remember on, on this one. And then the third thing is try not to drop below this line. Um, and and, and that, that means, you know, prevention is, is, is better than cure. Um, we're coming to the end of part two shortly, and there'll be another uh, Q&A uh, opportunity. I see one or two quick questions are coming in, which is excellent. I just want to show this, um, and it's also uh, related to the poll question that we asked at the start. So let me explain what this is, is we, we as human beings are naturally wired up, naturally predisposed to respond to difficult situations in these five ways. Um, let me just explain what the axes are first. So on the left-hand side of the graph here from low to high, this is all about me, let's say, or you. <laughs> this axis on, 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 on the left here is about my assertiveness. How assertive am I as a human being? You know, naturally, um, am I quite assertive? Not so much assertive about in the middle. So this is all about me, my assertiveness, the importance of achieving my goal at the expense of the other person's goal. So how is it import how important is it for me to win this argument uh, or this particular point of issue or this dispute? Um, and again, on, on the left here, this is focused on my needs and my desired outcomes and agenda. What, do, what am I trying to get um, out of this situation? On, on the bottom axis here, uh, you know, along here where my cursor is, this is all about um, your empathy. So how empathetic are you towards the other person? Um, this is to the extent you're focused on the other person's interests and needs, their desired outcomes and agenda. To what extent are you focused on them? So the left axis is all about you, the bottom act, the, 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 um, the axis along the bottom, the x-axis is all about how empathetic you are and how interested in a mutual relationship, um, you, you, you know, how interested you are in that. So those are the axis. Uh, and then the, the different styles or different approaches to negotiation are, are, are these. Number one, compete. So some people like to compete uh, in, 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 a, in a dispute situation. They like to win. And below here, it says, I win, you lose. So we all know people who, who, if you're in a bit of a disagreement or dispute or a situation with maybe a sister, maybe a brother, somebody who always likes to compete with you, always likes to argue with you. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, I win, you lose. It may be you, you may like to win um, and, and at the expense of the other person. And that approach to disagreements or disputes is a competitive, number one, competing approach. Number two, down here, if you're not too focused on, on your, your needs, um, a bit empathetic, but not so much, um, uh, then, then you might do what uh, people said they would do in the poll at the start. You might avoid that situation altogether. You might try to avoid it because it's too hard or too difficult or too painful to, to go there. It's just easier to avoid it. The other person may do the same. Um, they don't even wish to talk about it. It's, you know, it's too difficult. It's too emotional. It's too tricky. There's too much money at stake. You know, so, you, so you both avoid it. And in that situation, you both would lose um, the loss is in not addressing it. Um, and avoiding it is even worse than, than you know, perhaps 
dealing with this, the situation. Over, over here on the right, number three, is, is accommodate. So if you're very, very empathetic, you're focused on their interests and needs and what they want to achieve at the expense of your own, um, then you might accommodate them. Uh, you might give in to them, um, acquiesce. So this is a I lose, you win sort of approach to, to disagreements and disputes. I will voluntarily lose and I will let you win. I will accommodate you for, for various reasons, um, you know, and, and, and on various issues. One, because I'm built like that. I'm bought, I was, you know, born and raised like that. Um, and two, I, you know, I, I just may wish to let you win on that one. And, and I'm prepared to lose. The one in the middle here is compromise. So some, some people say this is a quite a good place to be. Um, some people say this is the worst of all worlds because with compromise, you both win a bit, but also you both lose a bit as well. Um, so yes, the bits you've each won, that's quite good, but you've you've almost like, you've lost some things as well, lot, acquiesced on some points. So compromise sounds good, sometimes is good, but you're not entirely satisfied, but you're, you're a bit happy, but not completely. And so is the other party. So do you want to be there? It depends. It depends. Now, over here on the top right, um, this is collaboration, cooperation. This is when you, you've got your interests and needs at heart, but you also care about the other person's interests and needs. And part three will cover this. This is where the magic is. So this is where everybody wants to be in, in terms of resolving disagreements and disputes. And if you can both sit down and find a route into this place, number five, then you both win, win, win. Um, and this is where disagreements and disputes can end even better with a little planning and a little preparation. They can end even better than the original uh, disagreement, um, uh, sorry, the original agreement or contract or, or, or relationship. But as with anything, um, all of this is really hard. Uh, this is particularly hard. This is where you might want to this, call the support of a mediator, uh, an independent third party to, to help you through it, because it takes time, patience, commitment, professionalism from, from the parties, um, certainly, um, and you might need some extra support and help. But this is where the magic is over here in the, in, in, in the top right hand corner of the box. So yeah, those are the, again, some, some are conscious, some are subconscious. Um, we probably know our natural default positions and our default approaches um, on, on this slide. So our natural default position towards conflict and a number of us said that we, we naturally avoid six or seven people that said avoid. So, so that means you're here, those that said avoid. I think one person said seek uh, mediated support. So you, you might be over, over here. Um, but I don't think anybody said confront or compete. So if, if you said that, you'd be here in this box. Um, so yeah, what do you think? Does that make um, sense? Any thoughts on, on that? We're almost at the end of part two. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Kevin. It makes a lot of sense, the different negotiation styles. But I'm curious to know how to navigate between the different styles and what works best when. Excellent question, yeah. Um, what, what can usually happen uh, in, a, in a disagreement or dispute? Now imagine one with, with a family member again or a, a, a one at work with a colleague or, or a boss. What we actually do is we, we have perhaps, whilst we do have a natural way of being, we also are a little bit cleverer than that. And, and we might say to ourselves um, and, and to, to the other party, usually to ourselves, well, I'm going to compete on that issue, um, but I'm, I'm going to accommodate you on that other issue um, because I want to achieve some compromise or some collaboration on this other issue. So yes, we do have a natural style, but we also have an ability to play tactically um, and to give a bit and take a bit. 
rather to the overall disagreement or dispute on an issue by issue by issue basis. And the best way to, to, to do this, as with most things, you know, thinking and preparation is so vital. Uh, and thinking and preparation, um, how to enter and manage and resolve a dispute is equally vital. So I'll come and summarize at the end. In fact, let me go to, to the next slide now. Um, how to think about all of this is, is in this order. So how, how, do we, how do we actually manage all this in practice? Well, the starting point is, is number one, know that everyone is different, including you and the other party. You, both parties, are at different starting points. As I've said a number of times, you both have different assumptions and perceptions. You both have different scarf needs and different commercial uh, and personal interests and needs. What are yours? Take an hour or two to dissect the situation and think, what do I really, really, really want out of this? What does good look like? How am I going to go away completely happy and completely satisfied? What does that mean to me? And write it down. Think about it. Write it down on a, in a, in, you know, on a bit of paper, notebook, and, and give it some thought. Um, know that it's a dynamic situation and things evolve over time as the, as the disagreement or dispute or the situation progresses. Um, and because of that, this means that you both think and feel and act differently and you'll both change uh, over time. Finally, you have different natural approaches as we've just seen on, on, on that slide with the, the five negotiation styles. You, you, you have a different negotiation style approach overall and you might take a different tactical approach on an issue by issue basis. So, uh, sorry. Yeah, so I hope that sort of partly, you know, answers the, the, the question, Caroline. Um, firstly, there's three parts to this. Know yourself. So you have to understand your own position. Um, you may not know them or articulate them. You may not even have thought about them. So that's the starting point. And thank you. Um, somebody said it was Socrates in the, in the chat. Very helpful. Thank you. Um, and know your own negotiation style overall and on an issue by issue basis. Secondly, try and know the other party. So spend an hour or two thinking about them. Where is your dad coming from? Where is your sister coming from? Where's your boss coming from? What do you think are your boss's personal and commercial needs? What are their needs for status? Is your boss or your, you know, your, your mum or, or your sister or your colleague a person who kind of likes status? Um, you know, do they, do, are they sort of perhaps a bit, you know, are they, uh, what sort of individual are they compared to other, other individuals? Spend some time thinking about that and thinking about what buttons are going to work. What buttons do you need to press to get them to come around to your way of thinking? Um, they may not know them. Uh, they may not know their own style. Uh, they may not have thought about them either. And then you have to guess what their negotiation style might be. Are they a natural competitor? Um, you know, the, the example that I always use for a person who competes with everything all the time is Donald Trump. Um, you know, are, are, they, are they a bit Trumpian in their approach? You know, that, that chap likes to win everything. He's a natural sort of competitor. He almost argues for the sake of arguing. So he would be top left there in our, you know, it's all about him. He would be top left in, a, in our graph. Are they a bit like that? Or are they the opposite? Um, you know, are they perhaps avoiding an accommodating personality? So give some thought to what is the other party, know the other party, um, and what is their negotiation style? How are they likely to, to react? The person across the table from you. And then this comes back to now coming to the end of part two, um, what uh, a person asked previously about listening. So. Number one was know yourself. Number two was, was know, know the other party. Three, this is what you can do together um, and be prepared to do this together. Uh, speak and listen to the other person. Speak your own story. Listen to, to the other person's story. Uh, be open-minded. Be understanding. That doesn't mean you have to agree. You're not simply just gonna, going to agree. Uh, understanding and listening and empathy doesn't mean you have to agree doesn't mean you have to give in or accommodate, um, but it, 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 
it is a necessary thing to do. Listen, be open-minded and understand. As I say, it doesn't mean agreement. You can still vehemently disagree with everything they say, but you can still listen to them and, and should. Um, help them understand your interests and needs and, 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 and you to understand theirs. Um, they have to understand you, but you have to try and understand theirs also. Know your own emotions and mood. A question came up about, um, you know, emotions and mood. Consider theirs. Uh, we said at the, at the start, one of the truths was that the other party likely thinks and feels the same way. So you're probably angry. Maybe they are too. You're angry. Maybe they're disappointed. That's part of the planning. You know, you have to think about, well, could this person be disappointed? Um, or are they angry? Or are they both? Are they feeling let down? I'm feeling let down. They could be feeling let down too. This is all part of the thinking and the planning stage. And if you go in having prepared and done all of that, then you're going to be in a much stronger position to, to, to speak, listen, and be open-minded. Correct misunderstanding. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Build rapport, build trust, um, and, and try and build, and if necessary, repair that trust. Um, and, and the repairing of the, the trust comes out of being able to do all of these things in the first and second bullet really well. Correct misunderstandings and miscommunications quickly. Apologize if where necessary. You still don't have to agree. Apologies don't mean that you agree. Apology would go along the lines of, look, I'm really sorry I acted like that. I behave like that um, in, in this particular circumstance because you know my emotions kind of got the better of me I still don't agree with with what you are saying I don't agree with with your your point of view I do however apologize for the way I reacted on that call in that day on that day in that morning or afternoon I'm sorry about that I hold myself to a higher standard uh, and I, I apologize for, to you about how I responded but I still don't agree with anything that, that, that you're saying, and we still need to talk about that. Um, so that's the way an apology would go. There's no agreement there, um, but you, you have apologized. If you feel you necessarily need to apologize, then that's how an apology would, would look. And similarly, they may apologize to you um, for any, anything that, where they perceive themselves to have fallen short. Um, an apology, giving and receiving can go a long, long way, um, but it definitely doesn't mean agreement and it definitely doesn't mean accommodation. So, um, yeah, you can think about that in the planning also. Remain positive, remain professional, um, cordial. Uh, you know, we are still all on this planet as human beings, um, <laughs> the eight billion of us, so we all still do have to get along. Disputes do end. They always end. Um, and, and as I said before, sometimes they can end well, and they'll end well if you can do, do all of this really well. So yeah, remain positive, remain professional, they're normal, they're natural, and they do end. And keep in the communication and understanding boxes, these two here, um, as, we, as we mentioned before, if you can keep it above the line, you know, and go left and right, up and down the line, brilliant, and try and avoid getting down below the line here um, at all costs. So yes, there's the, the, that's the end of part two. Caroline. Thank you so much, Kevin. So really so insightful. So um, there's a question coming in from mm. Lois. She's asking, on being open-minded, how do you develop a resilient mindset for conflict resolution? Yeah, that's a, that's a, 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 very, a very good question. Um, a resilient mindset. I think, I think, um, you, I, I think the, the 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 first thing is is you you have to almost develop um, a personal toughness. You have to be prepared to, you know, know yourself reasonably well, and you have to be prepared to hear things that you don't want to hear, um, and you have to be strong enough and prepared enough and resilient enough to. Um, understand that one, the person that is telling you the things you don't want to hear is probably angry, annoyed, um, stressed, probably maybe, you know, wanting to hurt you, depends, um, you know, what, what the sort of situation is. So you have to be almost prepared for the worst and know 
that the worst is probably going to come and know that you can deal with it and, and know that you can take that and, and you can handle it. And also know that you can you can say exactly what you wish to say and you're strong enough and resilient enough to say the things that you honestly and firmly believe to be true also about them. Um, so you, you can be strong enough and resilient enough to articulate your points from your perception and assumptions about the uh, about the situation. So, yes, you might have to hear some things you don't like, but you also get a chance to say and articulate some things that the other party isn't going to like. And, and that can sometimes be difficult to do both of those things. So the starting point for a resilient mindset, I think, is there. Is 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 know that you can do it. Um, you you can you can give it, and and also you have to be able to receive it too. Um, and if you're strong enough to to do both, and you're professional and respectful and cordial enough and honest enough with yourself and the other person to do both, then then you will get through it. Um, and, and, and it may take a couple of goes, it may take days, it may take weeks, it could take months. But if you approach it like that and are consistent with it, with the, some support sometimes, um, you know, that can be coaching and support to, to you, or it can be coaching and support to both parties um, to help both parties through and then and or a full mediation uh, over the course of the day. Uh, sometimes you might need to get some support, advice and or support, but it can be done. And I think that's how you develop a, a resilient mindset. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin. Um, uh, two more questions. The first one is, how do we find a balance between being assertive and being empathetic when we're in a dispute? Yeah, ve very good question. I mean, and that. You know, that that is an excellent question that you will answer in the preparation stage. So, so you, you, once you've done the to say, OK, what is the situation, perspective and assumptions and perceptions about it? How am I naturally wired up to be? Am I a natural Peter? Am I a natural, you know, planning here are the five the five issues might be related to family might be about where are you going what job are you going to take what from you know you might want to pay rise and then you can you can issue by issue decide for yourself am i going to come on this one um, or am i going to accommodate if they are that then i'm going to accommodate um, if they offer that, however, I'm compete. Um, but I, I might suggest to them that I'll, I'll offer this and, th and then we collaborate. Um, and then that might elicit this type of offer from them or this type of response from them. So it's a bit like chess. It's a bit sort of like getting ready to play a game of chess. You know, where are you going to start from? Um, and and what, guessing where are they going to start from? Um, and then how might that play out? And then you get to choose what, what issues am I going to compete avoid am I going to avoid now? Um, but you might avoid them forever. They're going to have to come up. But technically, you just might avoid them for the moment um, because you've got some other issues you need to make progress on. Um, so that's perfectly legitimate and perfectly sensible you know avoid the smaller issues avoid the bigger issues depending on the circumstances make progress on these issues first um, and then do the big one at the end or do the big one first or you know vice versa um so excellent question the 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 answer is is yeah it's all in the thinking through all in preparation um about how how you approach the situation holistically Okay, um, so one last one, and then we can proceed with the last part. We'll answer Hussein, we'll answer your question in the last part. Um, so our last question for this segment is, how do we approach conflict when it involves deeply rooted personal beliefs or values? 
Yeah, a great, a great question. Um, you know, deeply rooted personal beliefs and values are so, so you know, vital, um, necessary, you know, for, for, they, they, there's almost no choice, you know, about them. They, they are our beliefs and values we've inherited, um, you know, be, believe uh, ourselves have inherited from our, you know, parents, grandparents, the values of the way we live our lives, um, the things we consider good and bad, um, you know, proper, not proper. So those beliefs and values are, are the way we orientate our our walk and our passage through our entire lives, you know, uh, whilst we're all on this planet, um, you know, they're, they're, they're what makes us human also. Um, the thing is, is, is to remember is every single other one of those people on this planet have their own deeply rooted beliefs and values too. Um, and, and, and those beliefs and values, whatever they may be, are probably as legitimate as our own personal beliefs and values. So again, the starting point is, is know what your personal beliefs and values are, guess what the other person's beliefs and values are, um, you know, and, and where they might be coming from. And then for yourself, coming back to your own beliefs and values, is decide for yourself how far you want to go to the edges of your own beliefs and values to achieve whatever it is that, that, that you want to achieve or to resolve the disagreement and or dispute in the way you want it resolved. Decide in your mind how far you will go, but you will not cross. So where is the boundary? Where is the limit of your beliefs and values? How far can you go still holding true to your beliefs and values? Um, but but not cross them. And if you do choose to cross them, know why you're crossing them and ask yourself, is that price worth paying? Um, and, and that's a vitally important question in the sort of planning and preparation stage again. What are your beliefs and values? What are theirs? They're both equally legitimate. Um, and, and how far are you prepared to go? And, and how far are you, where are you gonna draw the line? And, and not go beyond um, where is your limit? Uh, because everyone's got a limit, of, of, of course. Um, they have a limit too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin. That's really useful. Um, I think now we can proceed with the closing part. Okay, great. Um, just conscious of time also. Uh, so we shall crack on. So part three, what are some practical processes we can use um, absolutely to, to build bridges. So these are, and these will be familiar to some people, all people, I'm, I'm sure. Broadly speaking, uh, there are several practical processes available to us all, um, you know, as human beings in, 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 in society um, here in Kenya and around the world to resolve uh, dis disagreements and disputes. So again, I'll just do the, and here they are. Oops, sorry. Here, here they are. So I'll just do the axes first. At the left axis here, we've got costs and time increasing from the bottom to the top. Um, and then along the bottom here, we've got the controversy and adversary in the particular um, dispute. So how controversial is it? How difficult is it? How adversarial is it? Uh, this particular disagreement or dispute that we're in, um, again, from low to high over here on the right. And uh, through the middle here are the various processes that that um, we will be familiar with and have certainly have heard of. So down here, bottom left, the quickest, cheapest and easiest is prevention and education. Prevention is better than cure. Um, and if you're able to do some of the things that we've been talking about this afternoon, then you will have prevention. Um, and, and yeah, there we are, better than cure. Next one along is negotiation. Uh, that can, as it, as it suggests, is, a, is a, a conversation, a negotiation between those parties, the two parties, about the things that we have been, been discussing this afternoon. So perceptions, assumptions, interests, needs, commercial and personal interests and needs, a negotiation about that. Mediation is the next one up here, a um, little bit more uh, 
up back middle on the costs and time and the controversy and adversary. Mediation, I'll tell you what mediation is shortly, but it's a, a structured, supported negotiation with the help of a third party, independent, neutral mediator. Adjudication is another one. Uh, that's uh, and then followed by arbitration. That's uh, another one along and then followed, of course, by going to court, what we call litigation or, or going to court. And that that's the, the final stage that you can you can reach um, highest costs, highest in terms of costs and time and highest in terms of controversy and ad adversity. Um, each of these have their place. Uh, there is a place for adjudication, there is a place for arbitration, there is also a place for litigation and going to court. This line represents uh, the break where, up to this line, with prevention, ne education, negotiation and mediation, what we will talk about in, in, in a few moments, you, the parties, are in control of the entire process, um, you're in control of the issues that you talk about, um, and you're in control of the outcome. So if you want to talk about respect or disrespect, you can. If you want to talk about apologies, you can. Um, if you want to resolve it in a particular way, you can. And the parties, you two, not the mediator, the parties, you, you both are, uh, you know, if, uh, in, in entire control about um, what you talk about and, and what the outcome is when you settle as you go along and when you settle. The other side of this line, you hand that control over to someone else and somebody else decides for you. So in the case of adjudication, uh, arbitration, and indeed litigation, you hand that control over to an adjudicator, an arbitrator, or a judge, and they decide the scope of the issues. Uh, so an arbitrator decides what evidence each party is gonna bring. Some, you, you're allowed to bring some evidence, you're not allowed to bring other evidence, an arbitrator will decide. And of course, in litigation, a judge certainly decides what evidence is admissible and, and what isn't. So you hand that control over to a third party, they, they, they decide the issues, and an arbitrator or, a, or a, litig a, a judge isn't going to allow things like apologies and relationships and and um, you know things like that to be on the list of issues. That's that's not how arbitration and litigation works. They deal with legal legal cases only, um, and and they're not interested in interests and needs either. Uh, you know, the, by definition, arbitration and litigation, you just get a legal decision. So yeah, you you hand control uh, of the uh, the issues and the outcome um, to to one of those individuals. Um, there's a winner and a loser in 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 these three here, and somebody else decides who the winners and the losers are, which which of the party wins, which of the party loses. Down here, that's not the case. Um, there is no third party that will decide. It's it's the first two parties that are in entire control. So um, whilst each of these processes has their case, uh, sorry, has their space in the landscape, and I do arbitration as well, personally, as, as well as media, so I operate both sides of these lines. From a party point of view, these, these ones here are, are the best processes to, to adopt. So what is mediation? Very quickly, uh, coming towards the end, it's a structured and supported conversation between parties uh, based on these four Ps. So there are some principles, there are some people involved, there's a process, and then there's a particular problem um, in hand, the problem of the dispute, what the disputes, the disagreement or dispute is actually about. So I'll just touch on the principles. Um, mediation, indeed negotiation and mediation, is voluntary. Um, both parties have to volunteer for it. Nobody can force anyone to do it. It's consensus building. Um, you participate. It's very participative and discussive. It's in good faith. Um, you, 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 you come to media negotiation and mediation, both of you wanting to find a solution, not to do the other person over or to, to you know, outwit them or to, you know, undermine them or anything like that. Both parties are there in good faith at the negotiation or mediation table. Um, it's fair, flexible, it's private and confidential. 
Uh, litigation isn't. Um, if you want to find out all of the cases that are in Milimani or any of the other courts, look online, look on the judiciary website, all the cases are listed, so are the parties. Um, negotiation and mediation isn't like that. It's entirely private and confidential. Um, as I mentioned, negotiation and mediation is party determined. So you and your, your boss, um, you and your sister, uh, you and the, you know your, your friend um, determine as the two parties determine everything uh, that you wish to talk about and the outcome. Um, negotiation and mediation is without prejudice. So that means um, if you do have a negotiation or mediation, but you think there might be a court case after, what without prejudice means is um, anything you say in negotiation and mediation cannot be used uh, later by either of you um, in, 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 a, in a court situation. So that means um, you can speak about anything you want, you can write anything you want, you can ask any questions you can want, you can admit to anything you want. Um, and none of that can ever be used in a, in a court case if one comes along later down the line. You can call the mediator as a witness. Um, he or she won't come. They'll decline. Um, and you can't table any, any evidence or anything that, that was discussed at the negotiation or mediation because it's without prejudice. Uh, so, so, yeah, some of those, some of those principles there. Uh, in negotiation or mediation, there, there's, there are people, so you have to give some thought to the parties, who they are, how they relate to each other, um, their rapport, their history with each other, um, their levels of trust and respect for each other, and their communication abilities and style. Do they do with each other? Do they tend to shout at each other? Do they get along? Is one intimidated by the other? Is one a bully? Is one, you know, also a bully? You know, to uh, <laughs> give some thought to, yeah, the types of people. Um, in, in the negotiation or, or the mediation. There's some process, how you might structure the negotiation or mediation over the course of a day. And then there's the particular problem, uh, the, the personal interests and needs, the disrespect, the, the lacking of authority, the, um, you know, the contractual sort of money and deposit that we need to agree, the, the, the products that didn't work, um, you know, the shareholding agreement that fell apart. So the problem is, is the actual problem. Um, on the table. So yeah, negotiation and mediation, it looks like this with these four P's as important pieces of the structure. Um, very quickly, it's quite a busy slide. This is how negotiation and mediation works. You spend a day, and it's typically a day, party A and party B sat in a room together um, over the course of a, of a whole day. And the way that that, that day starts is, is it starts at the top of these two triangles here. The first hour, uh, the two parties, you know, shouting at each other, saying, I'm not paying, um, but you have to pay, you know, and that and that can be quite a sort of tense, you know, emotional sort of situation, uh, but necessary, vital, nonetheless, people need to, to voice their, their opinions and concerns, voice their position and demands to the other side, and the other side needs to voice theirs back, and both need to respectively hear it. Later on in the day, you're making progress. The idea is we go down these triangles, um, you're heading into interests and needs. Uh, this is what we, we talked about previously. So behind the I'm not paying statement, the person is actually thinking these products were for resale. My customers won't come back now because these products were broken or damaged. Uh, you know, um, so my, my own customers won't come back now. And that's what's really on that person's mind. That's what's making them say, I'm not paying. Um, the other person is perhaps thinking about, well, you made me look like a fool or you challenged my authority or, or when you spoke about my products, you, you, you know, you, you challenged my authority and integrity in front of my staff. Um, you know, this individual's hurt uh, and annoyed. Um, that's what's behind he or she saying, well, you have to pay. Um, this is the reason. This is the actual interest and need that we've we've discovered and revealed through negotiation and mediation over the course of a day. And then right down at the bottom, um, what's really driving party A behind, you know, the, the, that individual's comments is, I can't be seen to pay. I'm an important person in my community and I can't lose face here. So actually it's very personal. It's a very personal driver and motivation. Um, yes, it's a bit about the business and the products didn't work and now the customers won't come back, but actually it's a bit more personal and a bit deeper to that individual as a human being. 
around sort of dignity and saving face and so on. Um, and this person, party B, is talking about, you must pay because my children go to school, you know, uni next year and I need to pay the fees. So this individual has got much more of a family related motivation for the position that they've taken here. And this is the reason why they're shouting, you have to pay. Yes, there's some business and, and, and authority and integrity issues here too that has, has hurt them and affected them, but actually it's much more of a deeper issue with um, their concern about how they're going to pay school fees next year. So negotiation and mediation is about getting deeper, deeper, deeper down these arrows on the left, get under the skin of each of these, these, these position and demands to reveal the overlap. And the overlap is the route out the common interests, needs, fears, and, and there's always common interest and there's always overlap in all disputes. Um, and that's where the solution lies. Uh, that's the route out of, of, um, of all disagreements and disputes, taking time to see where the, um, the overlap is, the commonality between the two, on the face of it, very distant positions. Um, but with time and effort and energy, you can get into the overlap and you can solve it. Uh, very quickly now, last slide. Uh, this is what a typical mediation day looks like. Um, we start at eight, we finish at six. Uh, there's a bit of getting ready in the morning. Then there's uh, in, in separate rooms. Um, then there's some opening statements to each other, articulating and educating each other on the issues, on the, on, on the, on the, the, the thing that's gone wrong, on the disagreement and dispute, that's in the same room. Then after that, um, we split into separate rooms and we explore individually with me, uh, we analyze the issues um, in hand, try to get to the bottom of, of, of what is going on, try to get from here to here with, with both parties in separate rooms. Um, by about lunchtime where everyone's settled down and we're thinking about the future and we're thinking about making offers and options to each other in the afternoon, um, after lunch, we're into then making offers and bargaining and negotiating offers with each other. I'll give you the products back if you return my deposit. I'll let you go out and see your friends on Saturday if you promise to, to you know, wash the car or do the, you know, <laughs> whatever the particular um, sort of situation is. Um, I'll let you back into this friends group if you apologize for your behavior, you know, about that. Um, you know, and so on and so forth. It, it, it entirely depends on what the what the situation is. Um, by the afternoon, we're sort of reaching agreement. It feels like it's moving in the right direction. Uh, we're still in separate rooms, and the mediator is shuttling between. And then towards the end of the day, agreement is reached. Um, the the settlement agreement document is being written up. We're signing the settlement agreement document, and then by about six, it's all done. The dispute is resolved. Um, Everyone feels a little bit better, a little bit more relieved, um, and can move on with their lives. Uh, so that's a typical mediation day. So um, in summary now, uh, negotiation and mediation allows you to both realize that you both have different perceptions and assumptions, and each are legitimate. Um, mediation and negotiation gives both parties a platform to talk to each other, it allows you to discover things about yourself that you perhaps didn't know and think, and it allows you to actually know where the other party is coming from. So you don't have to guess. In negotiation and mediation, they'll tell you, um, as you will tell them. It encourages joint thought, articulation of the issues, discussion, learning, understanding over the course of that day through yours and the other person's interests and needs very logically, calmly, soberly, managing the emotions that are inevitably there. People get angry, people bang the table, people cry, people walk out. Um, that's all normal. That's all in a day's work. Um, that's how human beings are. Um, and that's all fine. And it can all be handled and managed. Um, and then you'll finally reach agreement um, and or final settlement. There, I think we are there. Um, that marks the end of stage three. Caroline, a very short uh, <laughs> Q&A, I think. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin. You know, I especially liked the 
uh, your last slide, the first three, the last, not the second last slide, we are talking about the mediation process, because then we get to see your process as a professional arbitrator, as a commercial mediator, because you don't really know, like, when you say you're a mediator, what does that entail? But, like, it's a whole day of activity. So, um, given what you've taught us today and what you've discussed, why is conflict good? And at the beginning, we started off with that Mentimeter poll, and we saw many people say that they avoid conflict. They don't like to um, confront it head on. So those two questions tend to each other. Why is conflict good? And why should we stop avoiding it? Because, because conflict prompts things and prompts action, thoughts and actions that you, you wouldn't otherwise think or do if there wasn't the conflict. So, I mean, there, there's, there's, no, there's no denying some conflict is, 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 is really, really bad. Um, and parties go their separate ways, never speak again. Um, you know, families are broken, businesses are lost, um, startups are no longer, shareholders, you know, disagree, um, and that people lose jobs, um, people don't sleep at night, there's stress, and, and, that's, and that's really, really bad. That's not because of the conflict per se, it's because of the way it was handled the way it was addressed or the way it wasn't handled or wasn't addressed. So in such situations that are inevitable, as, as we said, because we're all human beings and we're all trying to get along in life as individuals and in, in groups, um, you know, if, if that conflict was sort of almost accepted as the norm um, and dealt with in a different way, in this way, then there's, there's much more light at the end of the tunnel. And, and conflict puts you in into a spot where you have to think about how you handle it and and and, and think about how how you resolve it you know are you going to ignore it and, and walk away maybe for decades or are you going to sit down and logically and and sort of you know methodically and a bit scientifically think about how do we kind of get out of this and and get through it you know to the other side and if you do it that way then you can, and, and if the other person's willing, um, usually the other person needs to be persuaded to be willing. Um, if the other person's willing, eventually, to do the same, then that's where you can both win, win, win. Irrespective of how difficult it looks, how hard it looks, and it is hard, and it is difficult, and it is emotional. And that's why sometimes you need help, external help, independent help. Um, um, and, and that's where it can be better if you're prepared to sort of put in the hours, put in the thinking time, put in the preparation time, you know, maybe maybe two or three hours um, to start, maybe two or three hours in the middle of it, maybe two or three hours, you know, towards the end and the mediation day itself. If you're prepared to kind of do that, then the benefits are there. You know, it, it can be better and, and, you know, is better. You can live in peace, uh, you know, with yourself. Um, at least you had a go and, and may even, you know, get a result that, that, that you wish for and, and desire. Um, and you can live in peace with yourself and ideally live in peace with, with your, you know, family and friends and sometimes your employer, sometimes your ex-employer. Um, but at, at least you can live in peace. And that's where it can be good. And without the conflict, you never would have gone there. Yeah. Okay, um, so we have a question from Eunice. She's asking, based off of the slide I just referenced, is this typical to resolve the issue in a day or can you split, can you also split it up to give people time to cool down, reflect and manage their emotions? Uh, absolutely. So yes, sometimes you can do it. Sometimes you can do it in the morning. Sometimes you can do it in a day, um, a long day, um, but also you can absolutely split it up too. Um, I, I've got um, one particular matter at the moment um, where I've travelled to another county uh, in Kenya um, about tw twice already, and I will go a third time um, to support the particular individuals um, to resolve that particular dispute. So, yes, you, and, th and that's the third time over a course of about uh, four or five weeks. So yes, you can absolutely break it up. Um, and it's party led. 
So you know, the, the, it's it's as much or as little as the parties wish to do. Um, the parties are completely at liberty to say, um, we're just doing 10 minutes today. Um, I've never had a situation where they have said, uh, we're just doing 10 minutes today, but they certainly could um, because they're in control of the issues, the process, the outcome. And if those parties agree that, that 10 minutes is all they wish to do, then 10 minutes is all they wish to do. Um, even if the, the, the mediator has traveled to a, you know, a different county, that's that's too bad. It's 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 the it's party led, and sometimes parties, you know, will will say we're just going to do an hour uh, today, and then four hours later we're still talking um, because we're making progress. And so yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Uh, so uh, final question from Lois. Lois says, "Thank you for the great and informative session." She's asking in a work setting, how do you mitigate to avoid your occurrence of some of the conflicts? Um, you've, how do you mitigate to avoid occurrence of, of uh, conflict? Um, very good question. Um, it depends specifically on sort of, you know, what the nature of sort of that co com conflict is, you know, is it with your team members, your colleagues, um, is it with your sort of boss and, you know, perhaps those that are, are more senior, you know, it depends. Um, broadly, there are those five approaches. So are you going to compete? Are you going to avoid and perhaps avoid the, the sort of situation and remove yourself from, from the situation? Are you going to accommodate um, and perhaps, you know, give in a little. Are you going to try and sit down with whoever that other person is and, and try and compromise, give and take? Um, or, or are you going to go sort of, you know, top right of that graph and, and sit down properly and, and, you know, try and really sort it out, get under the skin of it, those two triangles uh, on, on one of my slides there. So there's broadly those five approaches um, and you will have to think through what is the best one for me based on who the other person is, you know, whether they're a peer or a subordinate or a boss? And the answer is different, probably, depending on who the other person is. How long are you going to be at that employer? Um, you know, are you envisaging you're going to be at the employer for a year or two or three or five, you know, or 10? Are you going to build a whole career there? That will influence how you handle it. Um, are you going to be gone in like a month? That will influence how you, you, you know, there's only a month to go. So you're going to be out of there. That will influence, you know, how, how, how you handle it. Um, who are these people that you're in conflict with? Um, are you going to see them again? You know, that sort of thing. Um, so difficult to answer without um, knowing the specific sort of situation there in the workplace. But but those are the roots routes you know through that um that you 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 might want to you know give some thought to and then formulate a plan um to 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 avoid or to mitigate you know that particular workplace situation oh, okay so we look at the general the five um different techniques that you showed us but then if you want more specific it depends it's it's contextual right it does. It, you look at it and you think, what am I going to do here? What, 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 do, what do I want to do here out of these five? Um, what is, is the nature of my situation that I'm in, in, in my workplace? I think it was a work, workplace example. Mm. And, and what, what one of these five or what two of these five am I going to do? Which is best for me? Um, which is best for, for them? Um, what am I naturally inclined to do? What do I feel comfortable with? Um, you know, out of those five, is it worth the effort? Maybe, maybe not. Um, so you have to, that's the thought process in the preparation, in the planning uh, as to how you, you might approach it. But yeah, it's broadly those five that you sit down and you think, and, 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 yeah, how, how am I going to kind of address this? Uh, and and sort of th and if there's if there's two or three people that are in your workplace that you're you know in a situation with let's say you might adopt one approach for one individual another mm -hmm. approach for another individual depending on who those individuals are perhaps their characters 
perhaps their seniority, perhaps your relationship with them. Are they in the friend camp? Are they in the foe camp? Um, lots of things to sort of, as we've been talking about, lots of things to sort of think through. Um, you know, and that's the know yourself bit. What are my assumptions? What are my perceptions and perspective on this, this situation that I'm in? And, and how do I want to handle it? Which of these five am I going to try first um, with regard to this, you know, the situation that, that I'm in? Yeah. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, final thoughts. Any parting shots for us? Um, well, I mean, I, I would just like to say, um, you know, it's a, you know parting shot, I, I, I think um, I would go back and say that with with preparation, you know, with some thinking and some planning that you can do in, in, in your own time, this works, um, you know, it can be good. Um, so yeah, g g g give it some thought and kind of almost like, you know, stick with it. Um, and trust the process. All is not lost. There is hope. Conflicts are natural. They're normal. Look how many people are on this planet. And we're very, very small um, as we're all trying to sort of get along. So, um, yeah, that's that's what I think I would say as a sort of a, a parting shot. And then, of course, to say thank you um, to you, Caroline, and to um, Accelerated ADMI and all, all, all the participants this afternoon for all their excellent contributions um, and excellent questions. I've, I've really, really enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Kevin. Um, thank you for making the time. I think we've, we are getting out of here with a really, uh, with really in-depth knowledge about conflict. You've taught us that it's normal and that there's actually strategies to solving the conflicts that we face every day instead of running and avoiding them, there's actually things we can actively and proactively do to solve conflicts and to better the relationships we have in our lives, whether it's work, um, with our friends, different social settings, with our family. Yeah, and thank you for the knowledge you've imparted on us today. Asante right. sana, and yeah, and I want to big, big thank you again to our audience. Thank you for participating. Thank you for logging on. We hope it was worth your while spending your Friday evening with us. I think we managed to answer everyone's questions. And I thank you again for responding and engaging with us and making this as engaging as possible. I wish you all, including Kevin, an amazing, amazing weekend. When Monday comes here, I hope you have amazing stories to tell everyone that you meet and I hope you get to really execute some of the strategies that Kevin has taught us today, next week, this weekend, whoever you find yourself in a misunderstanding with. So thank you all so much. Have an amazing weekend. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.